Did you know that autism is one of the fastest growing developmental disorders in the U.S.? Autism doesn't discriminate, and it occurs equally in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. The CDC reports that it affects one in every 68 children, one in every 42 boys. There is no medical detection or cure for autism. Based on these findings, odds are that you know a child that has an autistic spectrum disorder, or ASD for short. The percentage of ASD kids is going up every year, and we as educators and leaders in the church have the incredible privilege to be on the front lines of this matter. And do you know what that means? It means we get to make the greatest impact. So how do we do that? Inclusion. Inclusion doesn't mean that we are all the same or that we can make everyone happy and satisfied. Inclusion means we must be willing to learn and get along while recognizing our differences. It is messy and I can almost guarantee that one day won't look the same as the next, but through it all, we will honor God with our service, bless kids that need us, and be forever transformed. So we're going to spend this time talking about ways to best have an inclusive special needs process or program in your ministry. I learned most of what I know about serving kids with special needs from an organization called Key Ministry. Their website has a wealth of information, including recommended reading, blog articles, videos, and more. This organization provides meaningful connections between churches and families of kids with disabilities for the purpose of making disciples of Jesus Christ. It may give you some ideas or directions in implementing your own unique plan. Another incredible resource is AutismSpeaks.org. Using these resources, along with our incredible volunteer leaders, we built the first special needs ministry at a church I served in a few years ago. The key to meeting the needs of these very special children and their families is to build a trustworthy relationship with the parents and primary caregivers. Having honest and open communication with the entire family is imperative. For you as the leader, what does that look like? Most people like to keep their private lives private, so connecting with families will take time, commitment, and sensitivity. Make the effort to learn about each family's daily struggles and needs. The most common concern I hear from leaders is they don't feel qualified to work with these kids. Is that you? Well, remember the old saying, God doesn't call the equipped, he equips the called. You just need to love God and love people. There are resources for everything else. If you don't currently have a team of advocates for special needs, then I encourage you to reach out to at least one person for help. You cannot do this alone. Even better would be to find someone who is already engaged in serving kids with special needs and ask them if you can watch and learn what they do. Become a learner, a student of disability, by reading as much as you can about the specific issues facing the children in your community. There is a wealth of information out there, so it's easy to get overwhelmed. Stay patient and focus on one thing at a time in order to avoid feeling discouraged or burned out. How does an ant eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Collect stories from specific families and leaders to share with others and begin telling these stories of how serving kids with disabilities has impacted your life or the lives of others. This will help to enhance awareness and bring people together to share in this beautiful, messy experience. Among the wealth of resources listed, here are a few of the simplest strategies to introduce. They also happen to be the most effective. When dealing with squirmy kids that need controlled stimulation, consider using fidget toys. Things like bouncy or squishy balls, seat cushions, anything that can help the child discharge energy and help them focus. Have both digital and analog timers set so the child can find comfort in knowing what to expect. Have schedules posted and a seating chart so each child will know where their place is in the room. I encourage you to create a space for them to escape to when the activities get too overwhelming. Kids on the autistic spectrum can easily become overwhelmed, but with a cue and a safe place to remove themselves to, it can be just what they need in the middle of a lesson or a song. Assigning a peer buddy to each of your special kids is also a great way to provide some extra guidance as well as utilize junior leaders effectively. Please train them and introduce them to their buddy's family first. This may also be an incredible opportunity for relationship building, strengthening your church community. When it comes to working with special needs, I know I've only scratched the surface, but I hope I've given you enough to be encouraged to stay the course and equipped you with a few resources to get started. These families need us more than most, and I'm so glad that you will respond to that call.